Welcome back fellow Jeepers to Let's Build a Lily's Jeep. Today we are going to work on the flywheel assembly so we can get this engine reinstalled back into the Lily's Jeep eventually and get this thing driving. If the threads are all messed up, where it's gonna, the flywheel is going to attach, I would just use a fine thread tap and die set here and just re-thread all the uh, bolts here so the nuts will go on very easy. But this may not be your case, but in our case, the threads were pretty messed up. And then just grabbing your, one of your nuts here, just thread them on and it will work like that. Good as new. You wanna make sure that there's no grease on these components because the flywheel and the clutch do not like grease and they will not operate. Degrease everything here and then use acetone around the perimeter here to make sure all the grease is off and stuff like that. Get a quick spray. <laughs> pretty heavy buildup of grease here so I was going to use some uh, degreaser nut soak for 10 minutes and wipe it off and then probably finish it off with some acetone and actually get the grease off. After letting it soak for 10 minutes I was able to get all the grease off. I'm just going to finish it off with some acetone here get to make sure the residue is off and everything. <laughs> The flywheel is now finished, ready for install. And finally, we'll clean up the backing plate here. Make sure there's no grease on this as well. We're now gonna work on the flywheel and clutch assembly here. First, you have to make sure you put on the backing plate and you position it this way with this big hole facing upwards and that's for the st uh, starter motor. And then this bracket right here facing downwards into this corner. So you just stick it on the hole and that will just rest there for now until, until we get to the bell housing and transmission install, which will be in later videos. And now with the 97, tooth flywheel you will place it with this big metal pad facing towards you guys and just stick it on the holes but make sure you line up these bigger holes with the dowel pins so you just slide it on it's a bit tricky to get this flywheel on sometimes just wiggle it back and forth and with the with the uh, tapered dowels in the right holes now, put under six nuts. And that's why we re-tapped all of these bolts so it's easy to thread on these nuts here. These two right here are easy to get on because they're actually studs, but these four right here are bolts. And you have to hold the back with a wrench, but I can just start them for now. Taking you guys around to the back here, you can get a better view of these bolts I'm talking about. And right there, you have to use a wrench to hold on the back side of those bolts and then tighten those nuts on the front. And I uh, will do that right now. Using a 916 wrench and socket here, we'll just tighten these up by hand right now and then we will torque them later when we get there. Go around in the star patterns, we start here, go here and then back and then here to, to it pushes pressure on the flywheel evenly and then we'll torque them up.
torque the flywheel on to the engine and what you're going to need to do is use a torque wrench and torque it between 36 and 40 foot-pounds as per the manual specs. So we have it set to 38 foot-pounds just to be on the safe side and kind of in the middle of the range and we will just torque it up with a 916 socket. With the flywheel now torqued to 38 foot-pounds, we're going to give the flywheel a quick wipe with acetone and the install of the flywheel is complete. And now we can install the clutch pressure plate and the clutch. Mm -hmm. 